¿no? Every Sunday we come and we take in communion um, and it's a remembrance. Okay. But I think sometimes we forget that communion is not just a time of mourning. It's not just a time to be sad that Jesus went and died on the cross. It's also a time to remember the power that goes behind that sacrifice. Because without that power, that whole sacrifice, that process, that meant nothing. And it means nothing to us without that power. So when we come together for communion, we're not just mourning Jesus' death, we are also rejoicing in Jesus' power. And reminders of this power can be seen everywhere. In the world around us, when we look and we see the weather, we see the animals, we see all of it working together in harmony. That's a reminder of the power of God, the power of Jesus, but we can also see that message in stories, in music, in art. For that purpose, I wanted to share today a portion of one of my favorite books, um, Lord of the Rings. Now this, this book is filled with Christian imagery. In this book there's a character, a very well-known name of Gandalf, one of the wisest members in the group, the leader of the group, and throughout the course of the story he sacrifices himself for those he is traveling with so that they can continue on to continue their journey. And that's the portion I want to share with you now. Because they were running from those who wanted their death. They were fleeing, trying to escape with their life. So it reads, The ranks of the orcs had opened, and they crowded away as if they themselves were afraid. Something was coming up behind them. What it was could not be seen. It was like a great shadow, in the middle of which was a dark form, of man-shape maybe, yet greater, and a power and terror seemed to be in it and to go before it. It came to the edge of the fire, and the light faded as if a cloud had bent over it. Then, with a rush, it leaped across the fissure. The flames roared up to greet it and wreathed about it, and a black smoke swirled in the air. Its streaming mane kindled and blazed behind it. In its right hand was a blade like a stabbing tongue of fire, and in its left it held a whip of many thongs. I wailed Legolas. A Balrog, a Balrog has come. Gimli stared with wide eyes. Durin's bane, he cried, and letting his axe fall, he covered his face. A Balrog, muttered Gandalf. Now I understand. He faltered and leaned heavily on his staff. What an evil fortune, and I am already weary. The dark figure streaming with fire raced towards them, the orcs yelled and poured over the stone gangways. Then Boromir raised his horn and blew. The loud challenge rang and bellowed like the shout of many throats under the cavernous roof. For a moment the orcs quailed and the fiery shadow halted. Then the echoes died as suddenly as a flame blown out by a dark wind, and the enemy advanced again. Over the bridge, cried Gandalf, recalling his strength. Fly! This is a foe beyond any of you. I must hold the narrow way. Fly! Aragorn and Boromir did not heed the command, but still held their ground side by side behind Gandalf at the far end of the bridge. The others halted just within the doorway at the hall's end and turned, unable to leave their leader to face the enemy alone. The Balrog reached the bridge. Gandalf stood in the middle of the span, leaning on the staff in his left hand, but in the other hand his sword glamdring gleamed cold and white. His enemy halted again facing him, and the shadow about it reached out like two vast wings. It raised the whip, and the thongs whined and cracked. Fire came from its nostrils, but Gandalf stood firm. You cannot pass, he said. The orcs stood still, and a dead silence fell. I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of Anor. You cannot pass. The dark fire will not avail you, flame of Odun. Go back to the shadow. You cannot pass. The Balrog made no answer. The fire in it seemed to die, but the darkness grew. It stepped forward slowly onto the bridge, and suddenly it drew itself up to a great height. Its wings were spread from wall to wall, but still Gandalf could be seen, glimmering in the gloom. He seemed small and altogether alone, gray and bent, like a wizened tree before the onset of a storm. From out of the shadow a red sword leaped, flaming. 
Lantern glittered white in answer. There was a ringing cr clash and a stab of white fire. The Balrog fell back and its sword flew up in molten fragments. The wizard swayed on the bridge, stepped back a pace, and then st again stood still. You cannot pass, he said. With a bound, the Balrog leaped full upon the bridge, its whip whirled and hissed. He cannot stand alone, cried Aragorn suddenly and ran back along the bridge. Elendil, he shouted, I am with you, Gandalf. Gondor, cried Boromir and leaped after him. At that moment, Gandalf lifted his staff and crying aloud, he smote the bridge before him. The staff broke asunder and fell from his hand. A blinding sheet of white flame sprang up. The bridge cracked. Right at the Balrog's feet it broke and the stone upon which it stood crashed into the gulf while the rest remained poised, quivering like a tongue of rock thrust out into emptiness. With a terrible cry, the Balrog fell forward and its shadow plunged down and vanished. But even as it fell, it swung its whip and the thongs lashed and curled about the wizard's knees, dragging him to the brink. He staggered and fell, grasped vainly at the stone and slid into the abyss. Fly, you fools, he cried and was gone. Knowing that he was the only one who could face this foe, Gandalf stood on this narrow bridge and fought, defending those he was with from a terrible beast who was there only for their death. Because that's what sin is. It's there and it only wants death. It only brings death. And yet Jesus stood and he faced that for us. Just as in this story, there were those in his group who fought with him. They said, we won't leave you. So in the gospel accounts, we know that when they came to arrest Jesus, there was some with him who attacked with swords. But Jesus said, no, this needs to happen. I need to save you. Because even though this was a sacrifice, even though it did lead to Jesus' death, he still had that power behind him. He still showed that power throughout the entire course of events. As it reads in Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 33, When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. And the people stood by, looking on. And even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself as this, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there was all hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuking him, said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Knowing that Jesus had the power to bring angels down to save his own life, knowing that Gandalf could have escaped with his own life, that's what makes the sacrifice that important. Knowing that even though they could have saved themselves, they still faced that Balrog faced sin for our sake. That's what makes this remembrance important. It's not, the, it's not just a mourning of his death, it's a rejoicing in his power. So today we're going to go through the act of communion, coming together and sharing in the bread and the juice. And that's what we're remembering, the power behind Jesus so that his sacrifice means something. It's our act of remembrance, our coming together to share in that bread and that fruit of the vine that makes this act important. Now today we do have different bread than normal. 
But the bread's not what's important. It's here. We'll take part in it. But the important part of this remembrance is not the bread. It's not the juice in itself. It's instead Jesus, the power behind his sacrifice, and the fact that that sacrifice was for us. So please join with me in prayer.